Hi, this is Jonathan. How are you guys doing? Today's video is going to be a short one. It's a topic that I've been asked a lot, and that is how to stay in tune. I just want to subscribe to this channel and press the bell for notification of future videos to follow and be part of Patreon to support this channel. I would appreciate it. How to stay in tune? Um, after almost 40 years of playing, well, 35, give or take, um, or 36. <laughs> in any case, after all this time of playing on stage um, in a studio, I encountered tuning problems like all the time, you know, um, irregardless of the guitars that I was playing, irregardless of the environment that I'm in, whether I'm under hot lights or under the cool air-conditioned environment in the studio, guitars tend to go out of tune, and that is something that you guys are probably very familiar with. Uh, they are temperamental, um, being strings um, made of nickel, steel, they are subjective to the environmental changes, like, you know, temperature changes. So uh, you could leave, you could just tune your guitar up really nicely, everything is done, and you leave it on, you know, on the side for a while, and with the air conditioning on, and then when you picked up, everything is like sharp, and you go, why? Yeah, because, yeah, because of the temperature running the room. 
So um, that is something that we uh, have to discount from today's video because uh, it will be a very, very tedious affair. So what I'm talking about is like when you get your guitar in tune and you're going to play it, whether on stage or on, on in the studio, and the guitar goes out of tune, now how do you rectify the problem? There are a couple of steps to uh, this whole um, solution, if you must say. Number one is to get it checked in the luthier, if your favorite luthier, and spend some money in it, uh, on it, and uh, get it fixed, you know, if you can. But I think um, knowledge is so important to us players because then we know what is going on and we can sort of rectify it uh, ourselves. Or number one is we're just going to go from the top down. If you have a string tree, like you know, a, a, a metal string tree, it would be good to change it to a test, like what I did for this uh, for this strat. You know, I change it to a a test string tree. Now that would be a lubricated uh, material, so that when you are using a tremolo arm, whether you have a fixed bridge, it doesn't really matter. But when you're bending and when you're pulling, you know, it's lubricated. You know, this is a lubricated uh, string tree, so it doesn't get snagged up or get caught up. Now the other uh, way, which is the radical way, is to get rid of the string tree altogether and get yourself a a staggered locking tuners. Um, I'm going to show you what it's all about. So this is how a staggered locking tuner looks like. Of course, you have the locking components, and then you have this insert string inserts where it goes in. Um, you know the heights are incremental as it goes up, so that will kind of like create this tension for the high string without using a uh, a string tree so it just goes down because this is like really low so you negate the use of the string tree so with the second locking tuner you eliminate the string tree altogether thus eliminating another uh, point for snagging up the strings now as so you go down you have the nut to deal with now there is a way to um, find out whether you are having problems with your nut and when you're using a tremolo arm, sometimes when you're playing and then when you wang a bar, then it just goes out of tune, like, you know, it goes flat because it, get, it gets caught up. Now, there are many ways to solve this problem. Um, of course, you can buy a, a, a nut file, you know, a dedicated nut file. But you have this little nifty little thing that, um, you know, that you can get from AliExpress or from wherever. It's really cheap. It's like $2, maybe less in your currency. So what it has, it has uh, little files, right? And according to string size. So I don't want you to go on the nut itself and just go filing away. You know, choose the right um, string size and just gently, you know, lean it against the side, the both sides of the of the slot. We just want to just kind of widen the the slot and not deepen it, you know, just widen the side just a little bit, very carefully, very slowly, you know. As, um, Wayne did tell me that uh, it would be best to use a, a a sandpaper, you know, of sorts. But I find that this is really much easier. So I have to be really careful that I don't dig in, you know, just the side, just a little bit, you know, you can shave off too much and that will be disastrous. So what you want to achieve is to have the string coming in and not get caught up on the side of the slot, right? You know, so this is one way of doing it. Um, be careful because you might spoil your nut. So again, a disclaimer, do it at your own risk. If you're not too sure about it, go and get it done by your favorite luthier. Now, the other way the guitar can sound or go out of tune is your intonation of your bridge. What you need to do is intonate your guitar properly. So once you get it tuned, intonate your saddles like you know if you are sharp pull back if you are flat let it go you know sharp pull flat push so you know you you learn how to do this if if you want a a uh, a, a video of, of this i actually have it so i'm going to put a link up here how to intonate your guitar properly so once the intonation is done and when you're playing on the frets everything is in tune then you're you're on the way, right? So your guitar is in, intonated properly. And if you get all these things done, you should probably uh, be much more in tune than you were before with your whammy or without your whammy. Now, the other problem might be your whammy bar or your bridge if it's not installed properly. Like you get all these problems from really 
uh, cheaper guitars. You know, sometimes these guitars, the reason why they are affordable and really cheap is because there are some compromises to be made. So if you have a bridge that is poorly installed, you're going to have a problem because it's misaligned or stuff like that. Um, it will be good. Uh, if you get a a, a a known brand for your tremolo bridge, you know, I'm talking to you guys who are playing with tremolo arms, uh, tremolo systems, you know, you get a good system. A white rose is the best because you have that the knocking nut and everything stays in tune. You don't have to worry about all the other stuff that I talk about, about the string tree, because you, you ne negate the use of the string tree at all if you're using a white rose. So the white rose is the way to go if you do a whole lot of Van Halen and, and dive bombing. But for us average players, you know, I, I myself, for, for one, I, I don't really fancy a white rose at my age. So I would get a proper properly installed um, tremolo system and it will work fine. Uh, this guitar, of course, is the Fender Japan uh, traditional 50s uh, model. So I had it installed with a Vega Trem. So this Vega Trem uh, is a dream to play, but it takes a little bit of work. It's not as easy as any other uh, tremolo system like the uh, Goto 510. So it takes a little bit of adjustment to get it right. Now, finally, the other solution is to get a pack of strings that will stay in tune. Uh, strings are really important. Uh, I've played so many strings in my lifetime as a musician. Every strings that I can think of. I'm going to make a video about that uh, later on. And um, I found that uh, certain strings um, are too flexible. In, 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 they, they, they kind of flex in many ways. So it just doesn't lock into 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 position like in, into stretch mode you know when you're stretching your, your strings as you're playing you're stretching it it's supposed to lock into space into a, a place where it doesn't stretch anymore so I, I i've encountered strings that took a long while to get locked in uh, the thing about the stay in tune strings which i favor uh, I, I used a power groove um not in this guitar though and we'll talk about it later so the power grooves the sit power grooves that i use all i need to do was to stretch twice on each string just twice Bop, bop, wang, tune, bop, bop, stretch, tune, and that's all for all six strings. And once I get it all down, locked in, it doesn't go out of tune. Now, I kid you not, this is not a, uh, a hard sell or anything. Um, the two concerts, or rather the four concerts that I've played so far in this past uh, half year, um, I have uh, toured with the Pauletti, with my Pauletti, which was strung with the SIT power. Uh, power groups as well as my um, uh, James Tyler which is also strong with the power groups uh, SIT so what happened is that I only tune once when I step onto the stage during the show I tune once and that's the last I see on my tuner on my helix floorboard I never tune the guitar ever again throughout the whole course of the show and this is this is for me, okay? This is the truth. And this happened for all four shows. And that's probably because of the power grooves, because just stay, it's just locked in, like I said. When the stretch is locked in, in, in into tune, and it doesn't run. Right, so this guitar uh, is tuned with this set. This is an interesting uh, set. This is the balance set. Well, apparently this is uh, from a guy called Paul Allen. He happens to be an SIT artist. So it's designed to deliver consistent tension throughout the whole set. So I was just trying this and yeah, it feels good. But I'm still favoring the power grooves, the SIT power grooves, which I had installed on most of my working guitars. But this is an interesting change. So I can I can feel that, yeah, it's a little bit more balanced throughout, uh, especially when it comes to like, you know, uh, no bendings and, and stuff like that. Interesting set. So this is called the Universals, Balanced Tension, right? So the other new thing that I tried in this video was to use uh, a new amp which was included in the recent update um, for the Helix. You know, whether you're using a Helix floorboard or a Helix native. So this amp is included. Um, there's been a lot of videos about it, but I just thought I'd just give a shout out to this new amp. This is a Grammatical uh, GSG. Beautiful amp, lovely amp. Um, has this really nice warm tone. It's supposed to give you the dumbbell sound if you choose to. Um, the gain and the drive system, pretty neat, you know, but I just like the overall um, tone of this amp. Uh, really nice. I'll probably yeah, be using this quite a lot um, in the future. Yeah, so just so you know. Anyway, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, if you do, 
uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you like this video give me a like uh, subscribe to this channel press that bell for notification of future videos that follow and be part of patrons to support this channel i would appreciate it uh, i thank all my patrons for the wonderful love the friendship and the support thank you so much guys uh, yeah there's so many things that i would not do without your support thank you so much and another shout out to this new channel that i'm starting this is the vlog channel so john is just vlogging yeah so subscribe to that channel uh because i would probably do and upload a lot of videos where i go about my normal life um and when i travel so i will upload my videos on that so if you're interested yeah subscribe to that channel take care of yourself and i'll see you real soon Au revoir.